we need a word from the Lord. Just one word will, will push us into the right direction. And we just uh, thank God for this opportunity to, to study his word one more time. I'll be talking about an interesting uh, topic this evening. Um, as I was reading the Bible, a uh, certain story I came across and a word that uh, jumped out at me, you know, the, the Spirit of the Lord wanted me to magnify and, and pay close attention to was sleep. Sleep. And we're going to be talking about sleep tonight. Um, hopefully I don't put y'all to sleep, but... <laughs> We're going to be talking about sleep. And that's something that, uh, you know, a lot of us really truly don't understand. You know, and the Bible talks about sleep in, in many different ways. It, all, it, it even talks about death as being sleep. But we're not, be, we're not going to touch that, that uh, uh, definition this evening. But we're going to talk about two different forms of sleep. Um, we're going to be talking about the healthy sleep which is why God gave us the blessing of sleep. We're going to be talking about the healthy sleep. And then we're going to be talking about um, sleep that's not so good for a believer, for a Christian. All right. And you might say, what kind of sleep is not good for a believer? Well, I'm glad you asked because we're going to answer your question. <laughs> Prayerfully in the name of Jesus. Amen. So um, I'm, I'm completely... Uh, aware that there are real, true uh, sleep disorders, you know, to to human beings. And I, I'm I'm very cognizant of that, you know, and I don't take it very lightly. But as a believer, and and I keep I'm gonna keep going back to that because um, again, this is a Bible study, and is is aim at believers in Christ and we we have to see what God says about sleep okay now the doctors they gonna have one thing they, they they say about it but again when you're dealing with a supernatural divine God like we serve he has a whole different you know definition of what sleep is all about all right so um I believe I'm gonna start with the bad news because I always gotta leave y'all with good news <laughs> I want y'all to go home with uh, good news. Uh, so, um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a definition of sleep as it found in the uh, dictionary, a way that many of us, you know, we understand sleep. All right, sleep is marked by the absence of wakefulness. Uh, sleep is the loss of consciousness of one's sur surroundings, all right? And we can understand that. We can, under when we sleep, we, um, it's the absence of, of wakefulness, all right? When you sleep, um, it's the loss of, of consciousness. You know, when you're asleep, especially, I, I'm a deep sleeper. It, it takes something to wake me up. When you're a deep sleeper, you lose all consciousness. You don't even know you in this world, all right? And, uh, of course, we're going to look at this in, in the spirit, okay? I'm just giving you a definition of um, our uh, natural understanding of what sleep is. And um, also, sleep, uh, when you know you're good in sleep, is associated with dreaming. <laughs> we have dreams. A lot of us, a lot of us have nightmares, all right? Um, but then again, if you read the Bible, I believe it's in Ecclesiastes, it'll give you a definition. It'll give you a reason why you have certain dreams. It's, it says, um, dreams come through a multitude of business. And, and again, you can Google that to see exactly what scripture that is. Now, a lot of things we think of all the time. And then when we sleep, our subconscious is still going. It's still going. And a lot of dreams, you know, come from that. But, you know, some of these dreams be weird, so I ain't going to get into dreams. That's a whole different story for a whole nother day. <laughs> but just be, just, uh, some of you old folks, just be, be thoughtful and mindful when you start dreaming about fish. 
<laughs> oh Lord, let me leave that alone. All right. So um, let's look at. Um, I, I'm gonna give you. A, I'm gonna give you a scripture that we're gonna base this on because I truly want you to understand, brothers and sisters. Listen, I want you to truly understand something when it comes to sleep. Sleep should be a blessing come from God. Okay, sleep should be a blessing come from God. Okay, and and the more I I studied this, the more the deeper I went into it. But sleep is a blessing come from God. Um, I want to read Psalms one twenty seven, in verse number two. I want I want that to be kind of a a base because I want you to understand God. God gives us so many blessings that we don't even count as blessings. And um, but I want you to understand something. Sleep is a blessing come from God. And and unfortunately, it's some Christians that can't even sleep. Now, like I said, I'm completely um, understanding of these uh, natural. Uh, sleep disorder. I, I know, I know people, you know, for real with those kind of disorders, but I, I'm here to tell you that God can make you overcome these things and, and cause you to have a blessed sleep. When you learn to trust in Him, He will allow you to sleep. Sleep in peace. And I ain't talking about in the graveyard. He'll, He'll bless you to be able to rest in peace and sleep good overnight. All right, so here it says, uh, Psalm 127, verse number two. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrow. For so he giveth his beloved sleep. He gives us beloved sleep. <laughs> Y'all hear that? The Bible tells us here, it is vain for you, brothers and sisters, to rise up early in the morning, and then stay up all night long. You ain't doing yourself no good doing, doing stuff like that. When you don't get your proper sleep and your proper rest, you cannot function properly. Your immune system will break down. Your body will break down. And if you're not careful, your body will tell you, you got to go to sleep. And if you won't do it <laughs> under your own uh, uh, choice, your body will sit you down and you can't do nothing but go to sleep. I promise you it will. I'm a living witness. You know, sometimes you just feel like, oh, I got to get this done. I got to get this done. You know, this person depending on me, this person calling on me. I got to come through for this person. I got to come through for that person. And you rise up five o'clock in the morning and you gone all day, you busy, 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 and at 12, 1 o'clock, you just not trying to go to sleep and you're going to do it all again tomorrow, 4, 5 o'clock in the morning? No, you, that's not healthy. The Bible clearly tells us that's not healthy. It, it's vain for you to rise up early and to sit up late. All right? For, uh, to eat the bread of sorrow. For so he gives us his beloved sleep. He gives us sleep. Now, it's going to be times you're going to have to sit up all night. You know, you're going to, God, are you going to wake you up in the midnight hour to pray? And, you know, uh, sometimes you got to sit up and be a caretaker for somebody. You know, but, but I want y'all to get the principle of what's going on here. If you, if you up all the time being busy and you don't take time to give your body the proper rest, you cannot function how you're supposed to. All right? So I just want y'all to understand, sleep is a blessing come from God. And you got to understand that. So how many of y'all want to be blessed? We think of blessings, we, you know, we, we, we want it, a dollar sign beside it. But can't no dollar sign put, put you to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> if people got silly postopedic mattress and still can't go to sleep. They they rolling around on the couch trying to trying to go to sleep. Can't even got got their brand new mattress in there. Pillows and everything else. Yeah. <laughs> Lord, I thank you today. Alright, let's 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 move on. 
All right. I, I, I just want to give y'all, um, I just want to give y'all uh, a, a basis of what we're trying to accomplish here tonight. Because um, some of y'all need some sleep. You get cranky. It's just, it just like a baby. Uh, if a baby don't get his sleep, you wake a baby up out of his nap. Oh, you in for, you in for a day. <laughs> that baby going to give you the business till he get that nap out. I promise you. And it's just like that with, with, with grown up. If you don't get your proper rest, you're going to be cranky. You're going to be, you know, uneasy. Everything going to get on your nerves because you have not had your proper rest. Your brain needs to rest. Your body has to rest. And what better way we can rest if we lose consciousness for a while. If we get all of this stuff off our mind and we lose conscious of everything. Look, look at God. Get that stuff off your mind. And we won't willingly do it because we're always thinking about it. But when you go to sleep, you, you, are, you lose consciousness of everything for a little while. Ain't that something? <laughs> and the good, part, the good part about a good sleep is knowing who is protecting you while you are asleep. <laughs> That's how you get a piece of sleep. When you learn to trust God, oh, you might sleep on past that, that alarm clock because that sleep going to get good. You're going to wake up, stuff all down in your mouth, stuff all in your eyes, your hair all. I'm talking about good sleep in the Lord. <laughs> all right, let's go to one more. Now, I'm going um, to give y'all two different sides of, uh, of sleep, okay? Um, let's go to Psalms. Uh, Psalms 4, Psalm 4. Psalms 4, I'm trying to help somebody. Uh, of course, we're going to bring this down in the, in, in the spirit, but I, I'm trying to help you in, in mind, body, and soul. And uh, the Word of God has a solution for everything, everything. Everything you need is in the Word of God. And if we pay attention. Now, how many of you, before I read this next uh, verse, how many of you consciously say, you know what? I'm going to bed at 9 o'clock. I'm going to get my sleep. I got to get up 5 or 6 in the morning. I'm going to get my sleep. And you go to bed at 9 or 10 or however many, you know, uh, however late you you know you can get a proper night's rest, eight, seven, eight, nine hours, however many, you know many hours. How many of you consciously say, "I'm going to bed at this time, and I'm a Lord willing, I get up a certain hour and go on about my day." How many of you consciously say that? You and how many of you decide to do that, but end up one o'clock in the morning and you still ain't sleep? Whether it's by your choice or it's, you know, you just sitting up on Facebook watching video, watching one, one more episode of some show. And the Bible is clearly telling you it's vain for you to be sitting up like that, knowing you got to go to work in the morning or do whatever you got to do in the morning. It's vain. Go to sleep. You ain't missing nothing. <laughs> go to sleep. <laughs> All right, so Psalm 4. Psalm 4, I'm going to go to, um, I'm going to skip down to um, verse number 8. The Bible says this, Psalm 4 and verse 8. I will both lay me down in peace and sleep, for thou, Lord, only makes me dwell in safety. I will do what? I will both lay me down in peace and sleep. See, it's, it's many different reasons why people can't sleep. And like I said, there, there, are, true, there, are, there are true illnesses associated with uh, sleep and sleeplessness. All right? uh, insomnia, and sleep apnea, and all kind of stuff like that. I'm, I'm completely conscious of that. But I, I'm also conscious that God is a healer. And that's what we're talking about. God can give you what you need. He can heal you. 
And if the Bible said God gives us his blessed sleep, that means it's yours. And if you're not, if the enemy is taking it away from you, you got to get back what the, what the enemy has taken from you and that God, what God is freely giving you, which is sleep. You can go to sleep and rest. What keeps us up? What keeps us up? The Bible said, I will lay me down in peace. You're not a baby no more, grown up, grown up Christian. All right. You can lay a baby down. And if they ain't ready to go to sleep, they're going to be up crying. They go, and if they know how to climb out that crib, they're going to be all over the place. Stuff going to be everywhere. Because they just not ready to go to sleep. They got to keep doing something. And we are just like that. If we're not ready to go to sleep, we're going to be up doing, you know, just midnight ride. <laughs> Whatever you doing. Worrying about your child or your family member. Worrying about stuff you, you can't do nothing about. Worrying about that person you, you, you love so much that don't love you. They running around out there. You can't do nothing about it. What's keeping, what's preventing you from sleeping? That's a real, real life question. You ain't done all you think you're supposed to do that day? You think it's still some more you need to do? Word ain't show ain't gonna put you to sleep. It'll put you in a everlasting sleep. Word and will anxiety. <laughs> but the Bible tells us here again, I will decide. I will make my own conscious decision to lay me down in what? Peace. Now how you gonna have peace? How you gonna have peace in a world that like we live in? When you can't go to a parade or you can't go to a, 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 a grocery store, you can't go to uh, elementary school, you can't go, you know, to church without people being, being concerned whether somebody going to gun you down. Well, how you going to have peace in a world like that? How you going to have peace when family members don't like family members? When people are, you know, people used to be able to, to go to sleep at night and don't even lock their door. But you, you, you go to sleep now without locking. <laughs> you can have your whole, you, everything locked. And your security alarm. And people don't feel safe. So how can you lay yourself down in a world like we living in now? In peace. You got to learn. See, that's why you got to read the rest of this stuff. You know, to be able to understand where the psalm is coming from. But to be able to lay yourself down in peace, you got to learn how to trust in the living God. You got to learn to trust in the one that covers you while you are in this place of subconsciousness or unconsciousness. Literally, because you don't even know you're in the world. But why would God allow us every day to go into this place of unconsciousness because he wanted us to lay these burdens down. He wants us to lay these burdens down. And what better time to lay it down when you are asleep? Some of us just roll around just, just so restless, just all over the bed, all over the bed. You go to sleep on the pillow at the head of the bed, you wake up. <laughs> just restless. Can't even sleep, can't even be unconscious, can't even let it go in your sleep. See what I'm saying? But God has blessed us with this thing called sleep. Alright? So, the Bible said, I will both lay me down in peace and sleep. For you, O Lord, only makes me to dwell in safety. In other words, the psalmist is, is saying, I trust you, God, with who I am. And everything that goes on in my in my my world, I trust you. So I'm gonna lay myself down in peace and believe that you're gonna cover me while I'm in this place of sleep. And I'm gonna sleep. I'm gonna sleep peacefully. Go back to the Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I'm not gonna worry. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He puts me in a place of peace. So that I can rest. I can sleep. 
Brothers and sisters, don't take this lightly. All right? Because sleep, I guarantee you, is somebody been praying God for sleep. And, and some of us are robbing ourselves from sleep because we cannot lose contact with all that's going on in our life. We cannot make the decision to lose consciousness of all that's going on in our, in our lives. And the more we think about it, the more we worry about it, the more we are overly concerned about it, the more it's robbing us from rest and sleep. Then we want to sleep when we ain't supposed to sleep. Come to church on Sunday, then you want to go to sleep. <laughs> go to work, you want to go to the bathroom and go to sleep. Now you're supposed to be sleeping overnight when that's your time to go to sleep. All right, so um, let, let's look at some examples. I, I, you know, I wanted to give y'all some some bad news, but I think we're just gonna we just gonna give you good news tonight. How about that? All right, we ain't gonna talk about the misuse of sleep. Okay, that that's a story for another day. We're gonna talk about the blessedness of sleep. How about that? How about we just stick with the good news? All right, let, that, that sounds good to me. I, <clears throat> when you know God has everything under control, your sleep is blessed. I want y'all to hear that, and I want it to get down in your your soul. You got to get to the place where you you go to sleep at night in peace. All right, what are you doing before you go to bed? That's a good question. Before you go to sleep, what are you doing? All right. You just hung up off the phone on somebody and cussed them out real good, blessed them out real good, and you think you're going to go on to sleep. Now, some people can sleep like that. <laughs> I heard a preacher one time, I said this before, I heard a preacher one time that said, they, 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 they do you like a dog and sleep like a hog. <laughs> Snow like a hog. But anyway... Um, you can't you can't sleep in peace and have a dirty conscience. That's why you gotta make you, you gotta have you know you gotta be at peace with your maker. You gotta be at peace knowing that once I go into this place of unconsciousness, there is someone protecting me, watching over me <laughs> all night long. Like the older folks say, all night long while I slumbered and slept. Hallelujah. Early this morning, he touched me with his finger. Look, I don't, I'm not worried about slipping off. Now, some people do slip off, but I'm not worried about slipping off in my sleep because if I do, I'm going to wake up in the presence of the Lord. <laughs> so I'm not worried because I have somebody watching over me all night long. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I know one thing I learned from my granddaddy. Eight o'clock, he was gone to sleep. He didn't care what we were doing. Eight o'clock. But grandma be over in that rocking chair just, oh Lord, Lord, would you do something with these boys? <laughs> but granddaddy, if it wasn't no baseball, no World Series, the Dodgers wasn't playing, he was gone to sleep. <laughs> oh Lord. All right, let's move on. Uh Let's look at some examples. I got a couple of examples I want to show you. Um, and I want to, let's go to Acts chapter 12. And this was our studying when the Spirit of God calls this word sleep to just be magnified. Like, I want you to talk about this. I want you to talk about this. I thank God for a good sleep. Praise the Lord. Because you know, I have been, I have been in places where I had, you know, you just work hard all day and, and you feel like you just gotta get stuff done in the evening and you just work, work, work. And you don't take time to stop and you sleep a couple of hours and you right back on it again. I have been in a place where my body, my, my, my whole being just shut down on me and I was sick and still trying to go. But, but that body said, you go on, you, you take one more step and see what happens. <laughs> so I had to stop. I just had to stop 
I had to just stop and, and, and go to sleep. I had, I had to sleep. See, that's the difference. I had to do it. But the Bible said, I will lay myself down in peace and sleep. I will make a conscious decision to get my rest. So I won't, it won't get, it won't get to that point where your body say, you gonna do it. Alright? Make the decision to go to sleep. Alright? And then think about what you are doing before you go to sleep. Do you pray before you go to sleep? Do you pray? Now, the older folk, we, we go on to Acts chapter 12. The older folk, older generation used to teach us to pray before we went to sleep. Even if it wasn't, you know, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. <laughs> but now I lay me down to sleep. I'm making the conscious decision to go to sleep. <laughs> Lord, I thank you today. Thank you, Lord. But I, I wouldn't think about it then, but it, it just, it just, all, everything they used to do was for a reason and for a purpose. You go to sleep, you pray. Some, you know, read, read the word of God. Go to sleep with these positive thoughts, with the spirit of God moving on you, and, and, and it'll, he'll help you go to sleep. You can't go to sleep worrying, you know, worrying about these situations you, you got before you, worrying about the appointment you got tomorrow, worrying about the, 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 the surgery you got next week, worrying about your loved one that, that has gone on the glory. These things you, you cannot do anything with. You got to talk to the Lord about these things. Lay your burden down and go to sleep. It's okay to go to sleep. Some people feel guilty if they go to sleep. Oh, they think I don't care. I'm going to sleep and they still up worrying about it. They'll think you don't even care if you go to sleep. But brothers and sisters, you do care enough to go to sleep. <laughs> go to sleep. Get your rest. All right, Acts chapter 12. And I was reading this, uh, again, I was reading this. And a lot of times when people read this, they'll be so amazed and so involved in the fact that uh, Peter, uh, I, I'm gonna focus on uh, verse uh, six of chapter twelve and eight. But the the story is, of course, the um, disciples were preaching Jesus and his resurrection, and the people of that day didn't like it, and they would imprison them, lock them up, you know, sometimes stone them or do whatever. But in this case, they locked Peter up and put him in prison. The Bible said uh, in Acts 12, the Bible said, Now about that time Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of J John, with the sword. Now you think about that now. You think about that. I want you, I want you to look at the scenario. I want you to look at it. Alright. Herod killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. Now, uh, James was one of the disciples. You know, it was Peter, James, and John, and Bartholomew, and Timothy, and all of them. Not Timothy, but Thomas, and all of them. Okay, Judas. He was, he was one of the disciples. And, and here, they were in a place that if they went around preaching Jesus, here we have an example that uh, James was killed. Now you think about that now. Now he, James was killed by doing, for, for doing what? The same thing Peter was doing, being a witness of Jesus Christ. I want you to keep that in your mind. All right? So... Verse 3 said, And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Oh my God. I got you, James. Peter, you out there doing the same thing. Yeah. And, and the Jews, you know, pumped up Herod. You know, you know how it is when, when, when folk pump us up. We, we want to keep, you know, keep them pumping us up. Alright? So, Herod saw Peter doing the same thing, and the Bible said he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. But look, look how God worked. 
Look how God works. Y'all listen to this. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in the prison and delivered to him four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Now, because of the certain date and uh, season it was, uh, around Easter, what they were celebrating as Easter at that time. Now, that's not describing the same Easter we do. But anyway, they, they were uh, celebrating uh, a holiday at the time. So look how God worked this out. Instead of killing him at that time, they put it off. Look at God. <laughs> and, and it wasn't nothing about them putting it off. It was God's plan. Watch how God works things out. If you learn how to trust God, my brothers and sisters, stop looking at how it worked out in other people's lives, but watch how God works things out in your own life. Lord, have mercy. God has a plan for you. You know, so um, the Bible say they apprehended him and put him in prison. All right. And delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers. In other words, four groups of four soldiers uh, apprehended Peter. That's how that's how much they had, you know, to 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 lock him up. wasn't just one officer or two. They have four groups of four to apprehend him. All right, now look at this thing. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison. Look at God. <laughs> now, he could have been killed. But can't, But this is, why I wanna, this is why I want your mind to go with. Again, we talk about sleep. We, this is where I want your mind to go. Can you imagine what Peter is thinking at this time? Now, they had just killed James. What's going on on Peter's mind? We can't imagine that because we ain't been locked up like that. We ain't had all these soldiers coming to apprehend us. We ain't been thrown into the uttermost part of the prison with surrounded by soldiers. We ain't had this stress, this anxiety, this fear, like they could kill me at any time. Can you imagine what's going on in this mind? But I want you, let, let's read further. Let's read further. Peter was kept in the prison, but the Bible say, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church under God for him. Now let's go to six. This is what I want to focus on. This is what jumped out at me when I was studying this thing. Reason why we're talking about sleep. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. <laughs> and I read that and I was like, look at Peter. How can I be like Peter in this situation? Now, I know it's some of y'all out there right now going through some, some, some real life situation. Some real stressful situation. And I'm not, you know, we, we preaching you know, the word of God, we teaching the word of God. I'm not, I'm not at all knocking the fact that you are a human being and that you truly feel pain, that you truly feel sorrow, that you truly feel doubt, that you truly feel, feel fear. Okay. But at the same time, as I preach or teach or pray for you, uh, brothers and sisters, um, I want you to understand that you got to overcome these fears. You got to overcome these doubts. You got to overcome these things that's attacking you because you got, God is still in control. The Bible say the same night when Herod was coming to get Peter, the Bible say he was sleeping with all these things going on right now. Peter was not concerned about what was going on because he knew he, he was in the hand of God. I'm going to go to sleep. Go back to what the psalm said. I will both lay me down in peace and sleep 
Because you, Lord, I'm trusting you. You have everything in control. That, that's, that's the blessedness of sleep right there. That's, that's the kind of sleep you want right now. That's the kind of sleep you need right now tonight. How can you can't have this kind of sleep? Now remember, this is the same night Herod was about to come get uh, Peter out of prison to kill him. But he was asleep. He, you think he was worried about that? How can you get to a place like that? How can you get to a place like that, brothers and sisters? You got to believe. You got to have faith in God and you got to learn how to trust in the living God. You got to learn how to turn some stuff over to the Lord. You got to learn how to, you know, stop being so overly concerned about and consumed about stuff you cannot do anything about. You got to understand where your help come from and you got to stand on it. Yes, your child may be going astray, but God is in control. If it's his will, that child will come home like the prodigal son. That child will come on home. That that person you worried about or, or worrying yourself sick about and they running around doing whatever they want to do, what you need to do is put them in the hand of God. The Bible say the church was praying for Peter without ceasing. So Peter was resting in the arms of God. Gone to sleep. Stop worrying about these people and go to sleep. You think they worry about you? They not. They just like Herod. They gonna kill you if you keep being concerned about it. All right. So the Bible say Peter was sleeping. Where was he sleeping at? He wasn't sleeping in nobody's bed. The Bible say he was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with chains. <laughs> oh, that just gave me a new revelation right there. When the enemy is trying to bind you. You can still rest in the arms of God. Lord, I thank you today. <laughs> now, how many of us are bound tonight? Your, 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 your bills are due. It's the first of the month. Your bills do. And you bought all them crab legs for uh, the 4th of July and all that meat and all that. Now you, you ain't got money to pay your bills. Now you worry. <laughs> Help us, Holy Ghost. Ain't no need to be in word. Go to sleep. Learn how to rest in God. God will turn that thing around for you. I ain't, I ain't saying misuse your, your resources and then go back to God. I ain't telling you that. What I'm telling you is learn how to trust in God. Don't let your bills keep you up all night long. The Bible say God will supply your every need according to his riches and glory. And what you don't understand is what you, one of those needs is sleep. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Lord, I thank you. He was bound between two soldiers. When the enemy is all around you and, and you can't see no way out, go to sleep. Get your sleep. And, 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 and I, like, like I was talking about, uh, there's some, some, the other sides of sleep that, you know, it's like a negative side when, when, uh, uh, sometimes you depressed and you just sleep, just sleep all day and it's, it's, it's still restless because again, when you, when you sleep too much and don't get your activity, that ain't no good either. So it's, it's a balance the way God put it together. But we talking about healthy sleep when you can, you know, Lose consciousness for that bit of time that God has blessed you to go to sleep. You need to get your sleep and rest in it. All right. So what happened? Behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him and, and a light shined in the prison and smote Peter on the side and raised him up saying, Arise up, go quickly. And the Bible say his chains fell off his hand. <laughs> the angel woke him up. Ain't the Lord all right? I want to give you one more example. I got three minutes. Three whole minutes. That's 180 seconds. Let me see if I can get one more scripture in here. And this, uh, again, um, uh, example. 
And, and this one coming from uh, Jesus, uh, Mark chapter number four. And I made mention of this because this is like one of the scriptures uh, that has carried me, you know, in my walk with God, you know, on several uh, different topics. But I, but again, this part, and we're talking about this subject tonight, this part jumps out at me again. Uh, Mark chapter number 4, and I'm, I'm going to read verse number 38. The Bible says, uh, Mark 4 and 38, And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. <laughs> Y'all see that? And again, this story is about uh, Jesus sent the uh, disciples to the other side of the sea. And um, the Bible says a great storm of wind and waves beat into the ship. So a storm is going on. A storm so great till it's got fishermen on, on board thinking they're going to die. And that's all they do. Sail out and fish so they know. They know how to navigate the water. But this storm was some kind of different. They thought this, this was the end of them. And the Bible says they woke up Jesus. Where was Jesus? The Bible says he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow. <laughs> he had just finished preaching to these people, uh, the multitude preaching. And, and for, for those of you who, who are not preachers, Preaching takes some out of you if you truly open yourself up to God and let him use you. When God speaks through you and you give it all you got, it takes some out of you. Sunday afternoon, you be wanting to go to sleep. You be wanting to take a nap because you done put all yourself out. God done emptied you. And so he has to replenish you. And he will. He'll replenish you. He'll fill you back over. All right. So, but what Jesus was doing, he would, and you can look at it many times. Jesus would be alone and he would go into the mountaintop and pray. All right. And be alone and, and be with God, be with, be with the Father and, and, and allow the Father to minister to him. But in this instance, I want to show you the importance of sleep. Now, if Jesus had to sleep, what do you think about us? If the son of the living God had to go to sleep, what you think about us? And he ain't say you just sleep, you know, he ain't just pull a, a two by four from the, from, from the ship and, 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 and go on, on, you know, sleep on, on the two by four. He had a pillow. He made himself comfortable on this, on this, on this trip, even though a storm was going on. Now, how many of y'all can sleep even when the storm is raging? Even when it don't look like you're going to get through this one. So a, a lot of us worried about things going on in our own life. But a lot of us worrying about things that's going on in other people's lives. A lot of us overly concerned about what's going on in other people's lives. What's robbing you of your sleep? All right. Even if it's a legitimate illness. That's, that, that still shouldn't be robbing you of your sleep because if God has given you the ability, the Bible says call it a blessed sleep. A blessed, he gives us the blessed sleep. Now, if, if that's something God has given you and the enemy is robbing you of it, you got to go back to God in prayer and ask him, Lord, help me go to sleep. Help me get my rest. Help me find that peace I need, Father, so I can go to sleep and rest in you and, and, and get my proper rest. I promise you, God, don't let the enemy take something from you that God, God is freely giving you. If all you want from God is eternal life, that's good. But God has so much, so much more to give us. All right, in this walk, in this earth, that we ain't got to wait for uh, eternity. Yeah, I want my mansion on the other side too. Yeah, but God done gave me a house down here to sleep in. <laughs> yeah, I want to walk the streets of gold and some golden slippers. 
But sometimes I need to get up and walk down these these dirt roads and these concrete sidewalks and some of these asphalt roads. Get up and walk. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, I want him to wipe every tear from my eye on the other side. But guess what? The God I serve will wipe them from your eyes on this side. If you learn how to trust him. <laughs> Lord, I thank you today. Sleep, my brother. Sleep, my brothers and sisters. Like uh like the song says, and I'm I'm a, I'm gonna get off of here. Sleep in heavenly peace. <laughs> and it ain't even Christmas. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sleep. In heavenly peace. Y'all have a blessed evening tonight, brothers and sisters. And listen, don't go to bed at 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning and then get up in the morning early. Don't do that to yourself. Be obedient to the word of God because it's vain to do that. L listen to the word of God. Be obedient to the word of God and go to sleep at a decent hour. All right? Rest in the Lord. You know your hour. You know your hour. Go to sleep. Get your rest. Rest in peace in the Lord, all right? Get your sleep, and, and you'll feel refreshed in the morning, okay? God bless you. I love y'all. I love all of you. More importantly, God loves you much, much more than I do. Y'all have a blessed evening.